Hi hey folks, so today what we're going to be doing on to guys is a little bit on the oblique plane, okay? And it's a little introductory exercise, okay? It's on uh, page 103 in your books, uh, sheet 3 on the oblique plane. So just starting off guys on planes, uh, I'm just going to read this question here. It says, uh, the horizontal and vertical planes are given below, okay? Sketch a horizontal plane with the principal planes of reference within the principal planes of reference and then draw the traces of this plane on the XY line provided. So first of all, just a little introduction on planes, okay? So we've obviously got the vertical plane here. We can see it there, okay? That is primarily where you would have your elevation view drawn. So we'd have an object and we'd be looking in at it like this and the image of that object will be projected onto the vertical plane. Likewise, we have the horizontal plane down here, okay? And generally the horizontal plane is where our plan view or the bird's eye view is projected onto, okay? So you're looking down top of the object, the object is projected here, okay? And obviously as we have on our sheet, uh, where the two planes meet, okay, that is signified by the XY line. So where the vertical plane intersects the horizontal plane, that is signified here by the XY line. I'll actually just put that in dark there, okay? So that's signified by the XY line, okay? So principal planes of reference, they're always talking about the vertical plane and the horizontal plane, and sometimes they might talk about the end vertical plane, but not usually. It's usually the vertical plane and the horizontal plane. So, XY line, where the two planes meet, that is the XY line, and we can see it over here, okay? So technically up here is our vertical plane, okay? And down here is our horizontal plane. So sometimes I often get students to do this in class. I do VP and then HP, okay? Especially in fifth year, kind of when you're going through this stuff. Um, now, what they're asking us to do is they want us to sketch a horizontal plane within the principal planes of reference. Okay, so inside here in our graph, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch a horizontal plane. That meaning, guys, it's, if it's a horizontal plane, it has to be parallel with the horizontal plane down here. But they obviously want it up a little bit higher. So I'm going to try and go parallel with this edge here, okay, as best I can. I'm going to do it roughly in there, something like that. No, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a sketch at the end of the day. And same here. Okay, there we go. Now that is my horizontal plane, and just put it in a little bit heavier there. Okay, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to heavy in this line here. Okay, so there we go. What I've actually sketched there, guys, is a plane. Look, it's 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 like it's floating in midair. Okay, and where that plane intersects the vertical plane, we have a line. Okay, the reference. Okay, first of all, that horizontal plane that I'm after sketching in is parallel with my horizontal plane down here. So technically, that plane that I've actually sketched in there is perpendicular. Now it's awkward to do it obviously there, but it's perpendicular to the vertical plane. Okay, so a horizontal plane that I've sketched, it's in perpendicular to the vertical plane. Okay, but the whole point of this exercise is that they want you to know where the horizontal plane that I have sketched intersects the vertical plane. And we can see there, it actually intersects it. And where it intersects it, intersects it, we get a line. Okay, and the relationship between that line and the XY line is that they are parallel. Okay, so sketch a horizontal plane within the principal planes of reference. Yes, we've done that. And now what they want us to do is draw the traces of this plane. Okay, so the trace of a plane is where a plane intersects one of the principal planes of reference. In this case, we actually have what is known as the vertical trace. And the reason it's called the vertical trace is because even though this is a horizontal plane, okay, and it's horizontal and it's parallel with our horizontal plane down here, it's intersecting the vertical plane up here and it's appearing as a straight line that is parallel with the XY line. So, how that would appear on your page is just simply like this. So it's above the XY line, put that down there, above the XY line, and it would appear like that, okay? And that there would be known as a vertical trace, sometimes called VT, okay, standing for vertical trace, because it's on the vertical plane, okay? That is the trace of a plane that intersects the vertical plane. Okay, that is the trace. So the trace is basically where a plane intersects one of the principal planes. So that's what we have down here, trace, where a plane
intersects okay or crosses intersects one of the principal planes of reference principal planes of reference and the planes of reference we know are the vertical plane and the horizontal plane now the vertical trace is essentially what I've done there vertical trace where a plane cuts through or intersects the vertical plane okay and then horizontal trace is the same thing where a plane and this time I'll say intersects the horizontal plane the HP I'm gonna say okay so very simple there a trace is where a plane intersects one intersects one of the principal planes of reference okay so we see we have a trace here that trace is called VT okay and then if there was a plane down here okay which is what we're going to be doing in the next question you would have one but that's called a HT okay so that's the first question done there guys a little bit on planes we have the vertical plane and we have the horizontal plane and we have a plane floating in midair there okay I'll actually just put in a little bit of shading so it probably looks a little bit better okay so I'll just kind of you can kind of see the idea that's just a plane floating in midair there okay and basically that plane is intersecting the vertical plane and where it cuts through if you imagine that plane went on to infinity but where it cuts through the vertical pl plane that's known as the vertical trace and how that would appear on an orthographic drawing is it would appear just as a line okay so now I'm going to move on to the next one here guys question two okay okay guys so this time what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be sketching a vertical plane in whereas the last time we sketched in a horizontal plane so question two it says the horizontal and vertical planes are once again given below okay sketch a vertical and end vertical plane within the principal planes of reference draw the traces of these planes on the XY line and once again provide it okay so first of all XY line is where the vertical plane meets the horizontal plane okay that is the line that we have there now what they want us to do this time is they want us to sketch in a vertical plane so if you remember the last time we sketched out and it was a horizontal plane so it was parallel with our horizontal plane or uh, when we sketched it this time we're going to sketch something that's parallel with our vertical plane so I'm going to put in a plane here as best I can now I have to put in two planes here so I'm going to try and make it small enough there's a plane there okay and then they want us to put in also an end vertical plane okay so an end vertical plane try and do this as best I can now something like that okay just gonna go over that now in a bit more detail Okay, so what you'll actually see here now guys is I've actually sketched in two planes and you'll have noticed I probably left a little bit of the planes a little bit blank, okay, on the lines. I left this one blank and I left this bit here blank as well, okay. So we're going to start off with the vertical plane, okay, that I've sketched in, okay. The vertical plane that I've sketched in, we can see it's floating here kind of out in, out in space. It's parallel with our vertical plane of reference here at the back, okay, it's parallel with that. We know it's parallel because we know that this edge here okay the top of it is parallel with the XY line okay so it's parallel with the vertical plane now the reason I left this bit down here blank is because I'm going to use a marker this time actually I won't I'm gonna use a dark pen okay I'm gonna heavy that in there like I said with the traces before okay this technically will be known as the horizontal trace because it is where the vertical plane cuts through 
the horizontal plane down here giving us the horizontal trace okay and that trace there would also be parallel to the xy line okay so it's very important so if i was to actually draw that trace in kind of explaining now i'm kind of repeating myself here this would be on my plan view and it would appear something like this okay and that would be known as a horizontal trace okay ht i could put in ht there okay so you get the idea ht ht and obviously in our plan view we see that as a line or as an edge view okay technically you're looking down top of it you'd see this but it's where it intersects down here this is actually what we see okay now you're probably getting the idea here i put in now in this case here an end vertical plane so in the case of the end vertical plane and i'm going to call it evp okay an end vertical plane that cuts through the vertical plane here like that and it cuts through the horizontal plane like this okay and how that would appear okay so there's the traces that technically now is my v vertical trace and then this here is my horizontal trace so you can see v t h okay so what we're getting onto here now guys is if i have to represent that over here in my orthographic views how that would appear very simply is it would be a straight line in my elevation so that's my vt and then it would also be a straight line in my plan and i'll put in the h here so it's often known as the vertical trace or horizontal trace vth okay uh, not too hard okay just a little bit of understanding in that there guys um, so you had obviously with a vertical plane here and then we had an end vertical plane here and the traces we have sketched them in okay here and down here and then we have put them in in the orthographic views over here okay that is just some important line geometry and plane geometry there guys so what we're going to move on to now is the third question on this page at the bottom left right folks so the next question on this page pay, uh, question three okay it's saying the horizontal and vertical planes are once again given below okay as always signified by the xy line which we have over here so i'm just going to put that in here where the vertical plane intersects the horizontal plane we have the xy line what it's asking us to do this time is sketch a simply inclined plane within the principal planes of reference draw the traces of this plane on the xy line provided okay so simply inclined planes guys okay are inclined at 90 degrees to one of the planes of reference okay and they are going to be inclined at an angle to another plane of reference okay so you probably have two examples of this here okay so i want to sketch uh, sketch them in as best i can here now so what that means is they're going to be inclined at an angle to one of the principal planes so watch this if i was to draw a trace i'm going to start off by drawing the traces this time okay so i'm going to draw a trace here and it's the vertical trace like that okay and as we can see that has an angle okay to the vertical trace therefore the other one has to be perpendicular okay so it's going to be parallel down here along the horizontal plane parallel with this line here okay this edge and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this going up like that and then here so very very first one that i sketched in there i'm going to draw in where the traces are so i'm going to heavy in those ones so the vertical trace which is where my plane intersects through the vertical plane which is known as the vertical trace so that's my vt and as we can see in there that is an angle i'm not sure what angle it is but it's an angle okay and then this one down here is the horizontal trace and i can see that the angle in there now as best i can is 90 degrees okay so it's 90 degrees to one of the planes of reference okay so just That's our first simply inclined plane there guys if i was to sketch that over here on my orthographic views how that would look is something maybe like this so in my plan view i would have a straight line which is the horizontal trace h t and then in my elevation view it might be something like i'm not saying it's part five but it might be something like that there and that would be my vt okay and that's how it would appear on a 2d drawing okay so we can see that this line here is where the plane cuts through the vertical plane here 
and that's called my vertical trace and once again the horizontal trace down here and that is at 90 degrees the angle in there is 90 and the angle up here is so certain angle whatever it is okay so that there is a simply inclined plane now that's when it has been inclined okay we can see there that it's inclined on the vertical trace sometimes guys it's actually inclined on the horizontal trace so i'm going to draw my traces here again just to give the idea and perception okay so this is when it's inclined on the horizontal trace i'd have something like this and then on the vertical trace it's perpendicular so you can see it's going up like that and then what i have to do is fill in the rest of the plane and it'd be something like that okay and once again heavy in the actual traces okay you can see that there and we have the vertical trace here vt and the horizontal trace here that's at 90 degrees in there and this one down here is the angle okay that we don't know okay that's the little angle in there so how that would appear once again on this drawing is in this one it would be the vt in this case is actually perpendicular so vt okay and then the one down here is at an angle i'm not saying it's 45 but i'm just putting it in i make it a little bit it looks a bit tighter even than 45 so it might be something like that and that then is our ht okay so we had the vertical trace like this and then the horizontal trace and then another simply inclined plane like this okay that is simply inclined planes guys they're always going to be perpendicular to one of the planes of reference be it the vertical trace or the vertical plane or the horizontal plane in this one it was the horizontal one over here and this one it was the vertical one okay so we're going to move on there to the last question on this page guys hope you understood that okay guys so the last question on this page here um, and I suppose this is actually what all these kind of planes uh, were leading to, okay, so being at a horizontal plane, a vertical plane, an end vertical plane, then simply inclined planes. Uh, the one we actually want to talk about is the oblique plane, okay. So the horizontal and vertical planes once again are given, where they meet each other is the XY line, okay, XY. And what we have to do is sketch an oblique plane within the principal planes of reference, okay. An oblique plane is not perpendicular to any plane, okay? It actually has an angle to both planes. So if I was to put that in, I'm going to sketch in an oblique plane here as best I can. Okay, so I'm going to draw in the traces first, all right? I'm going to do a line like this, which would actually be my VT. Okay, and we can see there that there's clearly an angle there. Now, the last time I went down parallel, okay, or perpendicular technically to the XY line, as it would appear on the sketch, but this time I'm going to go also at an angle. Okay, and technically there, I'm just going to sketch them in. That is my vertical trace. And then this one down here is my horizontal trace. Okay, as it would appear. Okay, and then the plane itself, we usually kind of do something like this. Okay, in tech drawing, you kind of go like that maybe. Okay, a little squiggly line, okay, kind of like that. And we're talking with oblique planes. And there is our plane, okay? That is an oblique plane, all right? Now, that oblique plane, we can see it there, has cut through the vertical plane here, giving us the vertical trace, and it's cut through the horizontal plane here, giving us the horizontal trace. And to sketch that in the orthographic views, how that would appear is something like this okay so just switch up my set square there so i'd have a vertical trace maybe I'm trying to guess the angle roughly something like that so that's my vt and then i'd have a horizontal trace something like that okay so vth that is an oblique plane and we can see clearly in both views it is not perpendicular uh, they are both angles to the planes of reference okay that once again if i was to put in another example here and i'll try and do it as best i can so i'm going to sketch in an angled view here Let's see hopefully it fits so there's one then i'll do another angled one here and once again something like that go over the traces this would be an oblique plane just facing the opposite way So that's my V 
I'm going to put T down here because the Y is there, and then the H. And once again, I'm just going over this. Probably sketch that a bit poorly if it have gone up, maybe something like that. Be okay though. Okay, so there is our other plane, and once again, how that would appear is something maybe like probably a bit. Okay, and then something like that. Okay, V T H. Okay, that is an oblique plane. An oblique plane has an angle to both uh, principal planes of reference, the vertical plane and the horizontal plane. Uh, I hope you can understand that there, guys. There's a little bit in that, guys. Um, but as long as you understand basically what the traces are, which is where basically a plane intersects, where a plane intersects uh, one of the planes of reference, that's where you're going to get your vertical trace and horizontal trace, okay? And then being able to draw them, obviously, in the orthographic views, okay? So after this, guys, we're going to move on to the next page, sheet four. So I hope you understood those, and we're going to tip on there. Folks, so the question we have here, guys, in front of us is another oblique plane question. Uh, it's from sheet four on the oblique plane section in your workbook. Um, it says here, question one, given the traces of an oblique plane, uh, find the plane's true inclination. So what they're asking us here is find the planes, find the oblique plane's true inclination to the horizontal plane using the semicone method. Okay, And then it says draw the oblique plane within the planes of reference over here. Uh, you can see I've it already done, uh, provided and illustrate how the semicone can be used to find the true inclination. Okay, so first of all guys, <coughs> what we need to make note of is uh, what we learned in the previous question. The oblique planes basically are inclined to both the horizontal and the vertical plane, okay? So we can see here the vertical plane and we have the vertical trace, okay? It's at an angle, okay, as well. And then we have the horizontal trace as well. It's also at an angle. So they're inclined to both planes at an angle, okay? Neither of them are perpendicular going up like this and down like this, okay? At a perpendicular angle, okay? So basically then the trace is basically as well, the vertical trace. We can see the vertical trace is where the plane intersects the vertical plane. And then the horizontal uh, trace is where the horizontal, uh, or where the plane intersects the horizontal uh, plane, okay? So there's the traces there. Now what we need to get uh, our head around is, let's say here, the vertical trace. That there, if I was to draw in just a little angle here, that little angle that we have there, okay? That little angle we have there, which would be this angle here, okay? That is not the true inclination of the actual oblique plane, okay? That is just the angle that the vertical trace makes, okay, to the horizontal plane, okay? So that angle in there is just the angle that it makes. Now, to the horizontal plane specifically, because if you have imagined the horizontal plane, the XY line here, and then the angle in the side here is basically the angle that trace makes to the horizontal plane. The angle down here is the angle that the horizontal trace makes to the vertical plane. Okay? So basically then, um, <clears throat> what we have to do is we have to basically get the angle, okay? And this is a bit awkward here, as we look in along here like that, okay? So we can look in along there like that, and what we want to do is we want to get the angle in there. So they're asking us here to use the semicone method. There's a couple of different ways you can actually get the angle, okay, inside here. But we're going to use the semicone method, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in here, before I actually do it over here, just a little cone, okay? So the idea is, what we're going to actually have is, every cone is made by a generator. So if I just, I'm going to roughly there, I'm going to do it like this, going down along it like that. And then it can be back into the center like that. And that looks right enough to me, okay? So I'm going to sketch that in green now, okay? A little bit better. So it'll come up on the screen there. There we go. <clears throat> now, what I've essentially drawn in there, guys, is the angle that is actually of the oblique plane. Inside there is the angle of the oblique plane. Now, remember, this is a 3D sketch, so obviously we can't tell exactly what that angle is right now. But if I was looking in in this direction, if a person was standing here in this direction, they looked in there, their eye view was looking in that direction, what we're doing is we're looking perpendicular to the oblique plane, okay, and we'll be able to see that angle there. And the angle is inside here. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, a cone, okay, to help us actually find that angle. 
So if I was to draw a cone, we know a cone has an apex, okay, on the ground it's going to appear as a sphere. So if I was to sketch, or sorry, not a sphere, a circle. So if I was to sketch this in, okay, that's point of contact there. Now it's a sketch in, it's a semi-cone now. I'll try and do this a little bit better. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to use a red now in this case. So what I'm drawing in here is a half cone, otherwise known as a semicone. Okay, as it's pressed up against the vertical plane. Okay, that's the base of it. And now at these points here, they would connect up to the height of it. There and down here. So as you can see there, we're kind of drawing a cone or a semi-cone in that position, okay? And it's backed up against the wall. Now, this green line here is technically a generator. And as we look in, that's actually showing us the angle of the oblique plane. And basically all we have done with that generator, as that generator rotates around, okay? That means then, once we rotate that generator around, so from this position, that generator literally just goes around here like that. And when it hits the XY line, okay, and it's connected up here to the top, the angle inside in here, that angle is actually the angle of our oblique plane, okay? Not this one. This was the angle of our vertical trace in respect to the horizontal plane. This angle in here, okay, is our angle for our oblique plane as we rotate it around, okay? So I'm going to represent that now on the sheet, okay? Uh, I should also have actually noticed that this line here is this little bit of a line here is perpendicular to the horizontal trace okay so to do that on our sheet what we're actually going to do it's a simple enough method okay you just have to be able to understand it and hopefully that graphic there helps you out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw in as best i can a cone okay so i'm going to imagine the cone you can pick anywhere along the vertical trace i'm going to pick it right here okay and what i've drawn there is basically the axis the apex of my cone is here okay and now from here, from this point, I need to go perpendicular to the horizontal trace, okay? So perpendicular to the horizontal trace. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my 45 degree on the horizontal trace like that. My other set score is over here on the left-hand side of it. Bring it in here, you can see it a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is, from where this point is on my XY line, I'm going to go perpendicular to the horizontal trace and that angle in there is perpendicular as you can see it was over here I was trying to represent that so what I've essentially drawn here and I might actually go back here to my sketch put that in there just a little bit of a line there what I've actually drawn here is this line here okay I've drawn that line which is here I've now drawn this line okay whereas this is our angle in here now you might think oh yeah just connect it up like that that's not correct though okay what we actually have to do is you might think as i say connect it up like that up to the apex because we're trying to get this little green triangle in here where we see the angle we need to rotate that angle in there around until it hits on the xy line so we need to take this distance here on our compass and rotate it around until it hits the xy line so <clears throat> very simple there what we're going to do now is we are going to rotate and I'll use the green. I'll actually use red because I use red to draw the cone. So I'm going to rotate around from here to here. I'm going to rotate there. And at that point there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that up once again using the red. Okay. And that angle inside in there, <coughs> that angle there is the angle of my oblique plane. Okay, so I'm just going to put in a little symbol there like that. That is the angle I wanted. And as you can see, it is very different to the angle that the vertical trace makes. Just to be able to actually draw in that cone fully, just so you can see it. Technically, this is the plan view of my cone. The apex is here. And then as we look down top of it, this is a semicolon, I should say. And then I would connect that back up here. And what we've essentially done is 
we came perpendicular so we could get the radius of it and then we rotated it around until it was in this position so I literally rotated it there until it hit this point here on my XY line and then connected it back up to the apex and that angle in there is the angle of my oblique plane okay so we initially looked in along here to see the angle okay and obviously in this view we see it as a line and then we rotated around and then we got it up here in our elevation okay I uh, hope that was understandable there guys a little bit in that um, that is the semicone method for finding out the angle of the oblique plane okay uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to move on to the next question question two there on the page <coughs> Right folks, so the next question on this page guys is where we're going to do something very very similar only this time we're getting the angle uh, of the oblique plane in relation to uh, the vertical plane okay the last time we got the angle of the oblique plane in relation to the horizontal plane now we're going to be getting the angle in relation to the vertical plane so it says here given are the traces of the oblique plane find the plane's true inclination to the vertical plane using the semicone method once again okay and then it says draw the oblique plane within the planes of reference provided and illustrate how the semicone can be used okay <clears throat> so the idea with that guys the last time what we did was we had to look in here and we wanted to work out the angle that the plane made there okay that angle going from there down to there okay that's the angle we wanted to make and as we can see that angle is in relation of the oblique plane to the horizontal plane this time we want to find the angle of the oblique plane in relation to the vertical plane so we're kind of looking in along here to basically work out that angle there okay so if I was to do this and what we're trying to work out is that angle there okay that the oblique plane is, makes okay it's kind of hard to visualize okay but we're trying to look in along there to figure that out uh, probably sketch that quite poorly should probably go out like that okay <clears throat> perpendicular to it now once again we're using the semicone method so what we're doing is we're drawing in a semicone okay so this time uh, on the vertical plane we're actually going to have a semicircle and on the horizontal uh, plane we're going to have a triangle whereas the last time we had our triangle on the vertical plane and vice versa we had our semicircle on the horizontal plane so the first thing we're going to do guys is we have to look in along there basically to see that angle in here okay and when we have that angle what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it around okay and when we rotate it down to our xy line what we're actually going to see then is the angle of the oblique plane in relation to the vertical trace okay and we're going to see it but we actually see it on our horizontal plane but it's the angle of the vertical plane uh, of the oblique plane in relation to the vertical plane okay so that angle in there is our answer it is not this one okay like the last question it is not the horizontal trace that's just the angle that the oblique plane makes okay uh, where the trace cuts it okay or the oblique plane cuts uh, the horizontal plane that is just the angle of the trace okay it is not the angle of the oblique plane so what we're going to do guys is we are going to do a vertical line so we can see here we have a vertical line here okay and we're going to set that up in our plan view so it's essentially making okay the starting of our cone and from this point here we are going to go perpendicular to the vertical trace okay so just a little bit of sliding set squares <coughs> move this stuff over way here so I'm just going to set up my long edge of my 45 on that rotate it around and there we go I have now created a perpendicular angle and that angle there is perpendicular okay and essentially what it is is we're looking down like that uh, perpendicular to that okay and we're going to rotate it down until we get it down here so I'm going to sketch that in now or not sketch that in scribe that in with my compass and rotate that around I'm going to give the full semicircle now when you're doing this in an exam you don't have to do this as long as you understand the method you only need from here to here okay and at that point there we're going to sketch in our cone okay so that would connect up to there this would connect up to here okay and what we've actually found that's the question done there okay there's just a bit of explanation in the understanding of it but what we've actually found inside in here okay is once again the angle of the oblique plane in relation to the vertical trace so whatever that angle is x number of degrees okay now that angle also guys I should have probably explained this in the last question is also over here as well it's the exact same okay so that angle 
is the exact same as that one okay so that's uh, question two done that page there guys so we're going to move on to question three at the bottom left there now okay right folks so what we're actually going to do here now guys is question three and it says given that the trace is once again of the oblique plane okay you can uh, look back up at the top right for your reference here okay uh, and it says find the plane's true inclination to the horizontal plane okay using the auxiliary method okay now this is the one I actually quite like using uh, for explanation purposes okay uh, because we've done a little bit of this on planes and we know how to get a plane as an edge view and as a point view so what we're actually trying to do here guys is we know that uh, if I was just to do a quick sketch there okay if I was just to do a quick sketch and let's say my bear with me now a second I've got a vertical, a vertical plane there in that position I've got the horizontal plane here like that and we can see our vertical trace is going like this and our horizontal trace is going something like that and then I was to connect them up okay so there's our plane there now I know it's kind of small there and you get the idea put in a little bit heavier there so you can kind of see it so Okay, so as we can see there guys, what we actually have up here is the vertical plane, so that's our VP, and then here we have the horizontal plane. Now what we're trying to do is, it says find the plane's true inclination to the horizontal plane. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to look in here along this here, which is the, the horizontal trace, so H, T, and then we have VT up here, so VTH. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to look in along the horizontal trace, okay, and then we're trying to see the horizontal trace as a point view because any time we look in along a true length we know the horizontal trace is a true length because it's flat on the ground okay so the horizontal trace is a true length it is flat on the ground the vertical trace is also a true length okay because it's obviously flat up against the wall but we're trying to look in along the horizontal trace because we're trying to get the angle of the oblique plane in relation to the horizontal plane okay so we're looking in along the true length the horizontal trace we're going to look in along here and we're going to set up an x1 y1 perpendicular to it and when we do that what we'll actually see is the horizontal trace as a point view and then as we have ht as a point view we just need a point somewhere up on the vt to get the angle of the oblique plane okay so not too hard just a little bit of understanding always just remember it's like we're coming here to the side and we're looking in along the horizontal trace so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an x1 y1 perpendicular to the horizontal trace so it doesn't matter if it's going through it so there we go I have set up there an x1 y1 okay and at this point there I will just simply project up my HT and because HT is on the ground there we go at this point right here this point right there that there okay, I'm going to put in an arrow here that is a point view of horizontal trace point view of HT okay now what we need to do is we need a height up here somewhere up along here we're going to take a point okay or a line and what we're actually setting up here really in reality is actually what's known as a vertical cutting plane so it's like I'm basically doing a cutting plane like this I'm doing a perp perpendicular line up and I'm doing a cutting plane like that okay a little pl cutting plane in there like that but what I'm actually getting is the height for this guy here because we're projecting from the plan and our, we're because we're projecting from the plan we take our heights from the elevation so at this point here now I'm simply just going to project the line up it does not matter where I can do it anywhere along the line and I'll take it roughly from I'll do it from a little bit in I'll do it here so I'm going to take this height from here to here okay in a second and that vertical trace remember it's not here okay the vertical trace is on the wall so it's actually on the XY line so I'm projecting up from here 
Okay, and I'm projecting up parallel to my horizontal trace because that's the direction we're looking in at. Project up there. So from here, I'm going to project that up. And what I'm going to do then do is take the height from here, take that distance. And I'm going to mark it up here, and that there is a point on my vertical trace connect my horizontal trace and my vertical trace and what we've actually found here is an edge view okay of so technically there now I have HT in this position and now I've got V up here okay and what I've actually got there is an edge view of my vertical plane so edge view or not uh, vertical plane sorry of, of the oblique plane edge view of the oblique plane Therefore, if I have an edge view of my oblique plane, the angle in here, the angle in there, is the angle the oblique plane makes in relation to the horizontal plane. Okay, so that's the auxiliary view method, guys. And all we did was we looked in here like that. Now, in the next question, what we're going to do is the exact same thing. Only in this case, uh, we're going to get the angle the oblique plane makes in relation to the vertical plane. Okay, so we're essentially just looking in along the vertical trace this time and working our way backwards the other way. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to that there now, guys. Right, folks. So last question on this page here. It says, given are the traces of an oblique plane, uh, find the plane's uh, true inclination to the vertical plane using the auxiliary method, okay? So very much like this question we had over here previously, okay? Where we looked in, the last time we looked in along the horizontal trace to see the horizontal trace as a point view, we found a point on the vertical trace, okay? And then we were able to get the angle the oblique plane made in relation to the horizontal. This time it's the other way around. We're trying to find the angle the oblique plane makes in, in relation to the vertical plane, okay? So if you look at our sketch over here, I've kept it in the top left-hand corner. The last time we looked in along here, now we're just looking in along there, along the vertical trace, okay? And what we want to do is we want to see the vertical trace, Vt, as a point view, okay? And what we're going to then do is we will be taking another uh, vertical cut as well once again, and we'll get a height from down here, or actually, sorry, I should say a depth, okay? So, uh, at that point there, I'm going to set up an X1, Y1 perpendicular uh, to my vertical trace. So, X1, Y1 perpendicular to my vertical trace. So, on the vertical trace, we want to look out along it, and I need an X1, Y1 perpendicular to that. So, I'll move it out a little bit this time. And there we go. That is my X1, Y1. Okay. And what I want to do is, looking out along that, to find the vertical trace. Okay. At that point right there, that is my point view of VT. Okay, it's a point view of VT right there. Okay, because we looked along VT, Okay, and you have to remember VT, okay, it has no height because VT is on the wall. Technically, V is right here, so they have no height, so that's my point view of VT. Now, what we need to do is we need to take a depth, okay, so you can take it anywhere along the line there. So, just you know, my set square here and get set up. So, I'm going to take take from here, I'll go out a little bit further actually, go to there, okay. And what I'm doing this time is I'm taking the distance from the XY line down to where it hits my horizontal trace there. But what I have to do also is I have to project from this point out, okay? Because remember, it is along, uh, it, our trace, okay, is along the ground, okay? I'm going to project there from, from there out, uh, parallel to the VT. So looking out along there like that. Project that out, and then after I project that out, take the distance from my XY line down to here. And then mark it up here. That there is a point on my horizontal trace. Having found that as a point on my horizontal trace, I can connect that up. So remember that's VT in there, and this is H. 
and the angle I have found inside in here is the angle that my oblique plane makes in reference to my vertical plane. Okay, the oblique plane makes in reference to my vertical plane. Essentially what I found is the angle of uh, this inside in here. It's kind of hard to see, but that little angle in there. Okay, I uh, hope you understood that there, guys. A little bit in that. Use the DCG Solutions website as well to help you. Uh, their graphs or, or their um, kind of uh, sketches and bits are probably a little bit uh, better than mine for explanation purposes. Okay, I uh, hope you find them easy enough, guys, and we'll move on to the next uh, page there. Okay.